humor me for a second. I know I haven't got any drums, but imagine at this point a dramatic drum roll. And the winner is, drum roll continues, tension builds, the United States of America. Runners up prize goes to Singapore and Sweden take the third spot. Now I know what you're thinking at this point, what is he talking about? What is this competition? And can we forget about the drum roll? Well, this is the first ever Global Digitalization Index. It basically measures and ranks countries in terms of their ICT maturity. And maturity, as we'll find out in a minute, means money. The index is the creation of Huawei and the International Data Corporation, or IDC. So I asked the IDC executive, Victor Lim, how the index had come about, how it's measured and compiled, and what, essentially, its purpose is. We felt that there is a need for an index that will help economies measure how they are progressing on their digitalization. And this, especially when you have new trends like uh, greatly advancing connectivity, you have AI, you have uh, you know, edge, quantum computing. A lot of the previous indices do not track this. So we wanted to create an index that tracks this and that allows uh, economies to be able to measure where they are on their progress. And why is it important? Because the whole world is digitalizing. You're either it or you're not it. And uh, a lot of the uh, policymakers are asking us, how do I know the impact? How do I know how I'm progressing? So it is timely to introduce a global digitalization index for that. But one of the more important key factors for this index that is missing from many other indices, it also tracks green energy, mm. sustainability. We believe that digitalization has to take two paths economic growth from digitalization and sustainability. Otherwise, with more digitalization, your electricity is going to, going to increase our carbon footprint. So both has to go together. So you have what we call sustainable digitalization. And that is the purpose of the GBI. So, and so what were the findings and what were the insights? Were there elements that surprised you about the, the conclusions that you came to? So the findings, uh, were that the economies progress on the Global Digitalization Index. As they progress along the path of digitalization, mm. they are able to see clear economic impact and benefit from it. The paper shows that for every dollar of ICT investment, there is a $8 impact benefit to the economy in terms of footprint. In terms so there's of, an eightfold multiplier. There's an eightfold multiplier. In terms of um, increased employment, that leads to increased value, increased productivity, innovation, new products. Um, but beyond that, we also see that uh, some economies, especially those who are in the emerging markets, surprised us when we saw how they have uh, actually able to leapfrog. Mm. They do not have legacy systems. So, for example, Kenya. Kenya has a high proportion of green energy. And that surprised me. But then really, if you think about it, it's not a surprise. They do not have all the legacy power stations that runs on fossil fuel. So when they are able to build, they just go straight renewable, to the next stage. renewable, renewable, renewables. Mm. Uh, you look at uh, Mexico; they don't have legacy data centers, and when they build, they can build advanced data centers with advanced storage. And then you see some of the other economies, like in the Middle East, straight to fiber. Yeah, forget about copper. Mm. So a lot of these uh, allow economies to be able to quickly get on board and live for each other. And so that's why the GDI is such an important thing. It helps to you to understand where your strengths are where your gaps are, mm. so policymakers can then make uh, informed decision on how uh, they are able to further press their national initiatives and policies and incentives and budgets to quickly digitalize their economy. What are the, what are the critical factors that mm. impact the digital progress of a country? You've talked about leapfrogging, so in some ways, the ability to do that would be one factor. Very good point, Gavin. So the key is this, firstly, ubiquitous connectivity. Yep. Connectivity is the artery of the digital economy, right? It gives you access. It connects everything together. It connects uh, devices to the data centers. It connects the data centers back to devices to and gives people access to applications that people can use. As you progress to more advanced uh, technology, mm -hmm. advanced applications that can really have an impact on the economy, you need the network to have higher bandwidth, lower latency, for all this to happen. So those will be the things that fiber, gigabit connectivity mm -hmm. on 5G and 5G 
point by point here at 5G Plus will be key considerations for economies. But besides the arteries, you need the brain. You need the data centers. You need the cloud. That's where your data is stored and processed and where it is able to host the application that creates value. High-speed connectivity without data center does not create value. It is a great place for people to watch videos and waste their time, but it doesn't create value. So you yeah. need the data center to store the data, process the data, give the applications. All these have to be sustained by green energy so that it manages your carbon footprint. Mm. And in order to make all this happen, you have policies, you need the incentives program, you need to build the necessary ecosystem in your economy to benefit this. So that's why our, the GDI has these four uh, enablers, ubiquitous connectivity, uh, digital foundation, green energy, policy and ecosystem. So it's the kind of the brain, the arteries, the, the sort arteries, of sustainability. The, your, your environment, the clothes you wear, the tools you use. So it's all there in one package to drive your digital economy. So if those are the key areas that a country or a, or a government and policymaker should focus on, how do they go about accelerating that? Is it simply about just pump more money into it? What are the factors there? First, you have to have a will. And this is not just saying I have a plan or I will. The will has to come from the top. Right. Either the president of the country or the prime minister have to say, we are going to be a digital economy. We are going to digitalize. We are not going to be left behind. We are going to leapfrog and outcompete the other economies. So it has to come from the top. And that will unlock programs and initiatives. And that will also unlock the budget mm -hmm. to make all these things possible. I won't kid you. You need to spend money to make money. So investments are needed, but it is not just necessarily investment by the government or the public sector. The government has to bring in the industries and the commercial, so you have to have incentives to drive them to mm -hmm. uh, digitalize. And that's right? the ecosystem you're the talking ecosystem about. The ecosystem, correct? Yes, precisely. Mm -hmm. um, and then the and the industry has to digitalize. Now, to some governments, it may seem to be too big a, a task, but you can digitalize specific industries specific agencies mm -hmm. but government also has to lead the government also has to transform first i mean innovation and technological advances are accelerating all the time how will you adapt the index to to take account yeah. of those changes the ai and the intelligent world is going to be the future it's going to be, be a big game changer it's going to push industry from the third industrial revolution to the fourth industrial revolution it's going to transform even how individuals interact how we use Things, how we work, how industries work. So that is going a big trend and that will continue to be the, the mega trend that will shape competition and capabilities and competencies in economies. Now along this, you have quantum computing, you have uh, virtual and augmented reality, you have all these other things that's also happening. But AI intelligence is going to be a key trend. And going ahead in the future, we will be evolving to a global digitalization and intelligence index, GDII. That will factor in more and more of how uh, intelligence, AI, is going to be a key, play a key factor in uh, driving the digital economy. It sounds like it'll keep you busy for years to come. And we are very committed and we are very keen to help economies, policymakers have that view that they can measure themselves, they can measure the impact, they are able to read the report, get the insights uh, and the guidelines and develop the roadmap so that they are able to transform their people, their communities, their businesses uh, towards a better intelligent world.